To be honest, I had no idea that I'd be making this video. I truly thought that this was just going to be a show that I watched and enjoyed. But my love for this show is something that I think should be talked about, no matter what the feedback or thoughts will be. But before I tell you what the show is, you need to go into this with an open mindset, okay? Oh, who am I kidding? You read the title, the show's called Amphibia. Hey, where are you going? Come on, I said open mindset. Well, to all of you that are still here, you're probably really surprised. A Disney Channel show? Come on, that guy visual. I was expecting more brutal menace combat videos. And while stuff like that is coming, I just feel like this video needed to be made. Not just for me, but for... Actually, no. Just for me. One final thing I want to mention is that there will be spoilers for the show. So if you just want to jump into Amphibia without me convincing you to do so first, more power to you. Because I bet the people who are still here that are going into this video blind will have no idea what I'm talking about half the time. See you back here after three seasons. Oh shoot. I just realized I have no idea where to begin. I guess for this video, I'll just talk about the two episodes that made me make this in the first place. The episodes in question are All In and The Hardest Thing. Now, Amphibia fans might recognize these episodes as they are the last two in the whole show. I told you they were going to be spoilers. So, I hear you asking, how did a show about talking amphibians make you want to make a video this bad? Well. I guess there's no better place to start then. This is yet another reminder that the pink powder in the soap dispensers is not candy dust. Man, was that episode climactic. An hour-long experience with nothing but jam-packed action, emotional moments, and spectacular animation. This penultimate episode is almost everything a fan of a story-driven show could ask for. And that's coming from a fan of story-driven shows, by the way. Which, I mean, you probably already guessed by now. This episode, as stated by Matt Brawley, the creator of Amphibia, is an episode with three boss fights between the main cast and the respective antagonists. The plan is in Herons, Sasha and Darcy, and Anne vs. Andreas. And man, they couldn't have done it any better than they did in this episode. We start with the planners and the Herons, which is a good starter, not only to give the audience a taste for what's to come, but also because it sets the stage for the rest of the episode. When it comes to intensity and stakes though, we can take a look at Sasha vs Darcy. This was definitely the fight to get you immersed when you went with Anne and the planners. And immersed it made me. You know that feeling when you know that the heroes will win and you're just waiting for the battling to end so the show can just continue? Well, the complete opposite is what you actually get to experience in this fight. Even though you can kind of get an idea that the heroes will win, it's a Disney Channel show, remember? You can't help but stay interested. This is not only because of the stakes, but everything that led up to the moment. The animation only helps with this fact, as basically any time this fight was on screen, it was like eye candy. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm no professional when it comes to how good a show actually is, with its plot, characters, stakes, or anything like that. Basically, don't take my opinion seriously, because I have no idea what's considered good or not. Go watch the show for yourself and develop your opinion around it, good or bad. That being said, the fight between Anne and Andreas is one of the most beautiful and spectacular scenes I've seen on television. That being said, I don't watch that much television. There are still so many cult classics I have not seen yet that, as people say, change your life. But as far as I'm concerned, this fight will forever live rent-free in my head as one of the best scenes in an episode I have witnessed. And this is the second to last episode! 
Anyways, this fight is truly just epic. I mean, Anne's calamity powers and the Dioplosaurus are just so cool, and together make for the perfect combatants. Then, the animation. Gosh, the animation. Have you ever seen anything so smooth? What was that? Stakes? Yep, this fight has them. I mean, would you call an invasion from another dimension high stakes? Because I sure do. Not only that, but the emotional climax is lifting as well. Andreas, before getting the upper hand, is stopped by Sprig, who shares with him the last message his friend Leaf left him before she left. This message not only brings half the people watching to tears, but explains a lot about the message of Amphibia, which is change. And trust me, we'll get back to that soon. As you expect, all the heroes manage to win their fight and save the day. Well, on Earth at least, we still gotta go save Amphibia, which indirectly leads to... The hardest thing is one... No. Is my favorite episode. Not only in Amphibia, not only on Disney Channel, but in cartoon history. Until I find something more worthy of calling my favorite episode, this will stay number one. And to be honest, I don't want that to change. Which, you know, kind of goes against the whole message of the show, so let's just get on with the episode, shall we? When we arrive in Amphibia, the heroes state to the Rebellion and Andreas' army that the baddies have been defeated. Which is obviously a lie because there's one right there. Just look behind you guys. Come on. Though, I guess the core needed to escape because how else would we have a world-ending event? Like, for example, the moon crashing into Amphibia. This, in turn, means that all the girls, Anne, Sasha, and Marcy, have to tap into the Calamity powers to save Amphibia, even if it might leave them stranded in Amphibia with no way back to Earth. And as if things weren't bad enough, Mother Ohm brings Anne to the side for some, well, life-altering advice. If things were to get hairy, she would be able to call upon the power of all three stones. This, in turn, will cost the life of the user. So basically, now we all know, yeah, she's gonna die in this episode. Other than that, look, cool anime powers. That's according to the show, by the way, not me. Three stars burning bright. Come from beyond to expel the night. Should they fight or embrace the fall, their choice will determine the fate of all. Three stars? Is that us? Do you burn bright with the power of the stones? Well, I have powers. Wait, do Marcy and I get cool anime powers too? Yes, honey, you should all get cool anime powers. Of course, these powers aren't just for looks, and the girls fly off to stop the moon. And the fight scene between the core and the girls has got to be one of the coolest things I've seen. I know I said that like maybe five times already, but this just takes the cake. I don't know if it's because of the connection I made with the characters, or the amazing action, or stunning animation, probably all of them, but I just can't seem to put my love into words. Which tells you a lot about how much I like this show, considering it is just a 1 minute 20 second fight scene. There's just so much for the fans of the show to enjoy, like the music playing in the background being a homage to the episode Battle of the Bands or the fact that all the girls' powers have something to do with them and what represents them. Honestly, just the perfect climax that I'll hopefully never forget. This is the coolest, most anime thing that's ever happened to me. I thought you to be able to fight by your side! Eventually, they get to the actual problem, the moon, and can't seem to stop it, even with Andreas helping after realizing that working with the core actually kinda sucks. This causes Sasha and Marcy to start losing power, 
as they are not used to the Calamity version, unlike Anne, who has tapped into it multiple times. I bet you can already see where this is going, huh? Anne decides to use the power of all the three stones to save Amphibia. Here we get one of the best lines in the show. Well, you dare use Amphibia's greatest treasure against us? These stones are not Amphibia's greatest treasure! Mother Ulm said all I had to do was ask, so I'm asking. Can you help me save the world I love? So, after saying goodbye to Sprig in a very heartfelt moment, she uses the stones to destroy the moon and in turn the core, saving Amphibia. And as he guessed, yeah, she died. We see her in what can only be described as another plane of existence. Here we get some explanations of the stones, why they were created and who made them, which is this thing right here. It offers Anne a job, to be the new keeper and watcher of the stones, as she was the only one in thousands of years to actually use the stones for good. Though she refuses, and explains to the deity that she's only 13, which, I mean, by itself is a good enough reason, but she goes on about change, and how she saw it in her friends, what would, and how she can still sense it in herself. As she states, Sorry dude, you seem cool, but I'm just a 13 year old kid. For every heroic sacrifice, I make a hundred dumb mistakes. I'd probably blow up the multiverse if you put me in charge. No! Don't do this to me, kid. You're the only mortal who qualifies. You're perfect. No one's perfect. My time in Amphibia taught me that we're all changing and improving and learning as we go. Every time I hit an obstacle, I found a way to overcome it. When I thought Sasha and Marcy would be stuck in their old ways, they proved me wrong and our friendship got stronger. And Wartwood? The oldest fashioned, least accepting place ended up accepting me as one of their own. So you're saying you could continue improving? Maybe even one day feel worthy of this post? It's possible. I have my whole life ahead of me to make bad choices and learn good lessons from them. Or I had my whole life ahead of me. About that. This convinces the deity to send her back to the living world as it sees that she will be an excellent guardian after a life fully lived. Lessons learned and herself changed. Huh? Oh, what was that? You haven't started crying yet. Well, luckily for you, we're only halfway done. After Anne gets back to Amphibia with newly acquired Calamity Shards from the deity so they can actually get back home, it's time to say goodbye. We get to see all three girls say their goodbyes. Marcy to Andreas, Olivia, and you, Nan. Sasha to Grime, and of course, Anne to the planners. Now, I know the question on everyone's mind. Did I cry? What do you think? After everyone finishes drowning in their own tears, we get a time jump in Amphibia, which, as stated by Matt Brawley, is nine months in the future. Of course, we see all our characters, the most important being Sprig and Polly, which, by the way, have amazing designs. Getting told by another character, Ivy, that there is another continent in Amphibia, potentially setting up a mini-series all about that. Anyways, Earth. This time jump is 10 years in the future, and we first hear that the so-called Frog Invasion is still believed to be a hoax by some, giving the girls a reason to still be able to go on with their lives. Marcy is the first to be seen, and then Sasha. Of course, they are still friends even after everything that has happened, and as they drive over to see Anne for her birthday, we get a little insight on what the girls have been doing. Marcy has started a webcomic, and Sasha has become a psychologist for younger kids, 
to help them with the emotional baggage. Overall, this says a lot about them as characters and how they have adapted growing up and changing. Though, I'd rather you learn why that is rather than me telling you. Finally, we arrive at the Aquarium of the Pacific, specifically the amphibian section. And as much as I want to explain in words, the best way to show you this scene is to let it play out itself. It perfectly explains the message of the show and completely broke me in the best way possible after watching it for the first time and multiple after that. A frog's environment is everything. They love humidity. This energetic fella is a pink South American tree frog. What's his name? I named him Sprig after a dear, dear friend of mine. Okay, class, everyone thank Anne the Herpetologist. Thanks, frog lady. Change can be difficult, but it's how we grow. It can be the hardest thing to realize you can't hold on to something forever. Sometimes, you have to let it go. But of the things you let go, you'd be surprised what makes its way back to you. Amphibia is truly a show that I can say is something I will forever keep close to my heart, as it has undoubtedly shaped me into a different person. Anyways, thanks for watching. As I said, I'm no professional when it comes to reviewing shows or anything like that. I just really wanted to talk about the show with Talking Frogs. I expect most people to be confused as this is not anything that was teased in my latest video and kind of just appeared out of nowhere. Trust me, those videos are coming, but after my last two videos, I realized I truly want my videos to be the best they can be. Anyways, I will no longer try to rush videos out, and while this means they will be coming out less frequently, like I posted frequently anyways, I hope you all understand my decision to do this. And I really thank you all for the support as it's insane for a small YouTuber like this. Other than that, thanks for watching. To the end, I really don't expect people to get to the end of this video, as it probably won't do as good compared to the others considering the algorithm and all that. But I'll see you guys soon.